Uh, Gatlinburg Bears starting things off today with five bucks. Uh, says uh, Crowder's obsessed with trannies, yet he is obsessed with playing dress up with costumes constantly. Uh, look, that's something we've said for a long time. That you know the the pastors who you know gay people are the devil and gayness is the devil's work and hurricanes are because of uh, Satan or God's mad at the gays, so he sends hurricanes. Uh, those are always the guys who end up like plowing male hookers in hotel rooms, usually. And with Crowder, like his obsession with the trans thing. And then his constant need to wear dresses and be a girl, those seem to be at odds with each other. He's also very emotional at all times. Very. Oh, boy. I don't think April knows yet. We're going to do the whole thing for overtime. Uh, but holy shit. I don't know how Crowder keeps doing it, but he keeps humiliating himself by like, I, I don't understand it. Like, does he, he works on the internet, so he has to know the internet exists, right? He has to, yeah. Uh, he also, does he understand that when someone sends you a copy of a contract, that they are not sending you the master copy, that there are other copies of said contract that could be used against you? I don't know if he knows that one. I'm not sure he knows <laughs> that, because the Daily Wire released a nearly one-hour video last night. Ouch detailing what they sent Crowder. Oh, they, by the way, they admitted. They're like, yeah, Crowder's not being like sneaky or sly or like, you know, oh, look out, Crowder might name names. Daily Wire went, yeah, that was us. We sent him that offer. Me. <laughs> so <laughs> like Crowder's whole thing of him going, and you better look out or I'm going to start naming names. Daily Wire's like, okay, you can name names if you want. But yeah, that was our, we sent that contract to you. We have a copy right here. Actually a good move by them, I think, to yes. come out and just say, no, that was me. Right. It's like when uh, Pen Pendulette said this years ago. He said, when someone tries to blackmail you, just out yourself. Yes. And then they have nothing. Pendulette said that somebody had like photos or videos of him and his wife. So uh, Pendulette just went, yeah, my wife and I do this, that, and the other thing that this guy is accusing us of. I'm not giving him any fucking money. Wear it like armor and no one can use it against exactly. you. Exactly. So uh, Win by 2 Radio says, thought it was big Glenn Beck. No, 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 no. What I was saying was that Glenn Beck must have had him on a similar deal because Crowder said, I can't do it like this. It's exhausting. I don't enjoy doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. So clearly Glenn had him on a similar deal where, well, and obviously because he was begging people for their emails so he could get them signed up for Mug Club, so clearly he didn't have access to his mailing lists and everything. No, not at all. So, Crowder, uh, let, let's set this up and then we'll do it for overtime today. We'll actually go through the, the offer itself. I'm not going to play the 50-minute video. I'm going to play a clip of it here. Uh, Daily Wire offered Crowder, according to, like, the way the deal breaks down, I've heard people say, four years, $50 million. So a shitload of money. $12.5 million a year. And then uh, I've heard uh, other people say it was two years, $50 million. Even more money. <laughs> Even more money. So. Oh, man. And, and all Daily Wire. It, it, now it makes sense. You know how Crowder was saying, oh, big conservative is in bed with big tech. Uh, two years, fifty million dollars. Then twenty-five million for two more. Okay, so four years, seventy-five million fuck dollars. And this dickbag asshole Canadian grifting psychopath had the nerve to go on YouTube, wave that contract around, and go, "Big Con is a lie. They're in bed with big tech. Uh, they're they're killing this industry. I don't want anyone else to sign this deal." Now look, we have our own little. Uh, mom and pop business here uh, with a goal of 305 this morning. Uh, we have our own little uh, mom and pop establishment here. That's mom. This is pop. Uh, this is uh, our little thing and we make a living and we give a couple other people a little bit of money, you know? Uh, we sound so small. Yes. <laughs> if like Crowder was being offered $50 million, now does it not make sense that the people who offered him that deal, in this case, uh, Daily Wire mm -hmm. wanted to control his YouTube and his Facebook and his Twitter and his everything else and say, hey, if you get banned from any of these places, if you get knocked around by any of these places, you get strikes from any of these places, we're docking you 250 grand. It would make sense because it's coming out of a huge chunk of money. Right. It's their, they're buying the Crowder brand. They're, they want the 6 million people on YouTube. If you get banned from YouTube, 
You're no good to the Daily Wire anymore. So essentially with those fines, they're protecting their purchase. They're protecting their investment. They're saying, hey, asshole, we're giving you $75 million. Fucking behave. We want your 6 million people to watch Daily Wire mm -hmm. stuff. So we're going to give you more money than you've ever seen in your life. And all you have to do is not get banned from these places. Simple enough. And then they said, well, you can't get your uh, channel demonetized or anything like this. Or it's, I think they were taking away a million bucks. Yes. If his channel if gets it, demonetized. If demonetized. So you're going to, uh, so you're going to get $74 million and have a demonetized. You don't need a monetized YouTube if you're making $20 million a year. You wouldn't think so unless you're greedy and a complainer. <laughs> I mean. I, unless. Unless his YouTube is truly making that much money, that he's gonna miss it. It's I don't know how you miss it with all the other money coming in, but Tim Down says you sound like sellouts. You give me seventy five million dollars. What is that enough? Now I I didn't uh, sell out. Tim says we sound like sellouts. I've been through this position in a much smaller situation. I did not give up my name. I did not give up my social media. I did what I wanted to do. But there is a price. And you, you're not a sellout if you say there's a price for buying my my brand. Mm -hmm. That's called being an adult. It's realistic. If Ben Shapiro came to you and I, now obviously we'd have to make this decision together. But if Ben Shapiro said to you and I, uh, Aaron, April, we're going to control your YouTube. We're going to control your mailing list, your VIPs, your audience. We're going to get access to everything. And if you fuck up, we're going to dock you a, a few bucks. What's the number you'd say yes to? Oh, God. Five years, how much money? How much a year? I mean, we're too small to be making these decisions. Um, okay, let me make it easier. I, on I've got to have some options here. Let's say I don't we're, know what to okay, throw out. Let's say we're Crowder's size. And he oh, says, Crowder's size? Let's say we're Crowder's size. And he says, four years, $70 million. That sounds reasonable to okay, me. Okay, sold. Yeah. Sold. You got it. And then they said, oh, uh, he... Uh, they won't let me do change my minds. They want me to do shows instead of change my minds. Imagine that. The place that's hosting your content wants you making daily shows and fresh content rather than taking three weeks to a month to make a change my mind. Yeah. I mean, when you make like such sparse shows like that, like nobody's going to keep sticking around. You need the fresh stuff. Yes. So they want 192 shows a year. I guarantee we do more than 192 shows a year. We do that oh, in a we month. Have to. I was, uh, we do thir like about thirty shows. Eight, eight shows a week. I believe we do thirty shows a month. Thirty to thirty-five shows a month. So, I, I mean, one hundred ninety-two. You know, a show every other day. That one on, one off. That yeah, I, I mean, I, that, that doesn't seem fine. That bad. You know what that basically is? A Monday through Thursday schedule. That's super easy, guys. And you're and you're getting offered. Seven, what's uh, potentially seventy-five million dollars? And we're complaining. <laughs> I mean, and I, I know we have Crowder fans in the chat right now, and we'll get to you guys. But if you're going to defend Crowder on this little stunt he pulled, you're either being disingenuous or you're brainwashed. I, I can't imagine. Daily Wire came out and said, "Here's what this lying sack of shit didn't tell you." You know, this guy's making it look like it's a big con. He's calling it the big con. This has been Crowder's grift forever, you guys, and you don't see it. He creates an enemy, tells you you and him are in the same fight. Let's fight it together. Now send me mug money, you stupid pay piggy. No. I, have, I have no problem with people taking money from their audience for providing a service. That's normal. But do it like the rest of us do it. Hey, guys, we're doing a fun show. You want to throw us a couple bucks? Cool. Yeah. Don't sit there and go, my enemy is your enemy, and you and I need to fight this enemy together, and the only way you can fight that enemy is by giving me money and buying a piece of ceramic. Okay, well, no. None of us have the same life as Steven Crowder, by no. the way, so none of us are fighting the same fight. I mean, th this he's been doing this for years, and you Crowder fans act like he's on your side. He's on Steven's side. Which is fine, but just be honest. I may not like some of the things Ben Shapiro says, but at least Ben Shapiro is very honest about what he is, what he wants, what he's looking to get out of this thing. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Beck, same thing.
Always seems like a red flag when someone says, let's fight the good fight together. Yeah. I, I but mean, just buy this first. Yeah, but buy this first. So we'll talk about it later in the show, but Crowder went, uh, he went and showed the pieces of the contract he wanted you to see. And this is where he's a dishonest sack of shit, and I'll fight with the Crowder fans on this one. He never told us how much money he was offered and for how much time. He just saw, oh, you guys, did you see that? Big conservative is in bed with big tech. Ben Shapiro is not in bed with YouTube. He was protecting his investment in that deal. And also that bag of shit Canadian psycho never sent them a counter offer. Nope. So this offer they sent him was a, a an opening salvo. Can you imagine being somebody who instead of wanting to negotiate, you just kind of throw a hissy fit? Publicly. You throw it. This is <laughs> the equivalent. Really you guys, one. this is the equivalent of your mom offering to buy you cereal, but it's not the exact cereal you want, so you throw a temper tantrum in the cereal aisle. Well, guess what, asshole? You're not going to get any more cereal offers. No, nobody wants to work with that. Nobody will want to work with You're that so guy. so bitchy. So, mister, I want... You know what this was? And I'm... Again, I'm sorry, Crowder fans. You're gonna... You're not gonna like this. In my humble opinion, this was Steven Crowder knowing he's going to start his own thing and rallying as many troops as he could to jack the money tree up a little bit higher for when he starts his own thing. I he was never that. going to Daily Wire. No. He was never going. And yeah, I mean, the shopping around, I don't know, because he's clearly signed a contract with the Blaze before, so he knows what a contract looks like. I don't know if he was just out there looking for another one to go out and complain about yeah. and make it look truly ugly. Right. You know? And and by the way, you can't uh, indict Blaze in this because as someone said in the chat, a lot of Blaze's people are independent contractors. They can go take outside work. Alex Stein said that he when he was on it. the show. He, yeah, uh, not putting all his eggs in one basket. Right, exactly. Uh, nobody's alt but mine says, you guys sound salty as fuck about this and are being highly disingenuous. I love your show, but come on. Disingenuous? Are we the ones waving around a contract without giving the full context of it? All I'm doing, nobody's alt, is I'm saying, here's the actual things that that lying grifter left out. So, salty, no, I don't like it when people go online, make this big declarative statement, and they're at war, and this and that, and they lie. He lied openly. And, we, and the problem is, we called it. We said, this asshole's grifting right now. Mm -hmm. And then the facts come out, and he totally is. He, 100%. He didn't, if he would have said, you know, I, I mean... If you're a Crowder fan, you can give him the benefit of the doubt and say, oh, he just forgot to mention the money part. How do you forget that much money? Yes. That's, now, that's a lot of money. In my opinion, he was being dishonest and disingenuous with you because he knows that if he mentioned the 50 to $75 million, people wouldn't have seen the other parts as egregious and terrible and awful. They wouldn't have clutched their pearls for Steven and they wouldn't have bought a mug. No working class person who's not brainwashed by this idiot is going to look at 75 million and go, oh, you poor thing. No, I mean, that's awesome. That is life changing. That is an, an incredible amount of money. Uh, so let's go to uh, let, let's see what they're saying. Uh, nobody's alt but mine says you guys are throwing one right now. No, I'm being entertaining. I'm being charismatic i don't feel like i'm throwing a hissy no fit. we're not the only thing we're throwing a fit we're calling crowder out for lying and you know what i'm actually am upset about though but now i'm defending the daily wire that is kind of gross that's the only thing that makes me feel gross but who made me do that steven steven crowder made me defend ben shapiro and daily wire look at aaron teaming up with the jews they're good friends to have hiding up next to my new buddy ben <laughs> I, honestly, the only thing problems I have with Ben, I have very small problems with Ben Shapiro, and they're with his opinions. They're not with him. I find Ben Shapiro to actually be very honest about what he is. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, uh, it, to me, Ben Shapiro, it, it, the, the big issue I have with him is, uh, you know, I don't think we should be giving Israel $3.8 billion a year. He thinks Israel's the greatest thing. I understand why we disagree on that. Like, it makes sense that he and I... I'm a a northern European descending white guy. He's he's a Jew. I mean, I, I understand why we disagree on Israel. The German and the Jew disagree on giving what? Israel money. Oh my god. Weird. I disagree with his sex takes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, you're right. It should be dry. His his no. pussy takes are horrendous. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> you're diseased if you're anything but dry. Who told him that? His wife? His wife. His wife. Uh, yeah, they weren't literally saying mop and bucket. Look, I'm not going to revisit the pussy debate. Look, we, we, look, you know, that's one of those agree to disagree things. You know, I want to get my 75 million. I get it. Talk nice. Uh, Sage says, yep, it was typical Crowder bullshit. I'm the victim by a mug. Did you see that cunt? The quarterings tweet. Yeah, I retweeted uh, Jeremy to Jeremy from the quartering. I, I just it seems weird when you have an impulse, when you have a, a first take on somebody, a first impression, because your first impressions you always kind of hold back on because you're like, well, there's got to be more to this. Mm hmm. Jeremy from the quartering is one of those guys where you have your first opinion of him of like, oh, this guy's a, you know, grifting sack of shit uh, who, who sucks anybody's dick to try and get ahead. Uh, and then you see him doing it. and You're like, oh, well, I wanted to hold back on that opinion because there's got to be more to him. And there never ends up being more to the guy. No. Uh, uh, the only thing he did good was change my mind, says the mood. But even those got stale. Yeah, I put those on the same end as when we talked to Alex about his uh, City Hall stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good for a little while. But now you, you're, you've grown past that. Well, yeah, you get found out, move on to something better. Yeah. I was thinking about this in the shower the other day. Uh, I'm not going to tell Alex that I was thinking about, about him in the shower. Alex. <laughs> but I was thinking about the, the World Economic Forum, you know, because I, I like to jack off in the shower. Uh, I was... I was thinking about the World Economic Forum, and I'm like, how badass would it be if Alex went there and started some shit? Mm. Brought Don Terrius to the World Economic Forum and somehow got in touch with Klaus Schwab. Would you get him in there, though? <laughs> no, not in a million years. I don't think years. Don Terrius is getting in there. I would love to see Don Terrius get into the, uh, the World Economic Forum. Uh, let's go to Veldrain. He says, watching Crowder is as entertaining as watching a progressive. Just shut off your brain and assume everything you are told is true. Don't think about it, Crowder says. You'll ruin it. Uh, Aaron, that's not true at all. Crowder is terrified of going independent. He was literally on the brink of an asthma attack during that video. Maybe fair, Citizen M, but could he have also been acting? I don't know. I was torn on that, too. I was trying to decide between what was an act and what was actual panic because he did seem a little nervous, like, oh, you know, either this has to stop or I've got to I've got to go. Yeah, I, I think... He, it did seem a little panicky. I hear you. I hear you. I just, I never know what's an act with that guy. Uh, Citizen M says, you called nothing. You were wrong about everything outside the fact that Crowder is a grifter. No, I said he wasn't, he wasn't giving us the whole deal, that there was more to this. He probably got offered a lot of money, and that's why they were asking for control. And that ended up being what the case was. Boy, Crowder uh, always seems to be contentious for you. There's actually some people in the chat, like, I don't know if they're actual Crowder fans, we have some Crowder fans who watch us. They'll be, they'll be reformed. Uh, Cameron says he's completely demonetized on YouTube. That's why he does the Mug Club. Well, he goes through these phases. He gets his monetization back. He gets demonetized. He gets it. I don't know where he is right now. He might be demonetized. But well, that's fine. Then shut up and do your Mug Club. But when, some, when you say, I'm demonetized, big tech, this and that, and then someone throws you a $75 million lifeline, don't make a video shitting on them and calling them the enemy. Maybe not. And then, does anyone know what the Blaze was paying him? No, no idea. For a, apparently well, a similar contract. He came in on a buyout deal because he had started something with Mark Levin, and the Blaze bought it out. So they were, he was on a different type of deal. He was, I, don't, I don't know what that deal was. Uh, but notice he won't tell us what that deal was. No. But he'll wave the Daily Wire one in front of everybody's face and go, they're the enemy, they're terrible. Hey, Steven, how much is the enemy offering to pay you? Shut up! Well, he also insinuated time and time again that the Blaze basically had a very similar contract because, like, yeah. I, I think what he said is, look, I haven't been happy in a long time, okay, because of this shit. Right. Oh, Crowder has real white people problems, says my dog barks. That's, you know what, that's pretty accurate. Uh... Quarter Pounder needs to be beaten and have his phone taken away forever. I don't know who that is. The quartering. Oh, the quarter quarter pound. God, am I stupid? A little bit. Uh, serial <laughs> Killer says, Jeremy is a sack of shit. His drunken sack washing of Elon Musk was hilarious. Oh, yeah, we played that one. Oh, that was so... He's like, all you conservatives, lend me your ears. If you love free speech, vote in my Elon Musk poll. Although we did kind of give Jeremy a little credit because he released a whole video talking about what a douche he was for doing that. I always think that guy's a douche. I don't like him. He is an unlikable douche. Uh, did you guys comment on Gavin's fake FBI raid? Yes, we have videos of it uh, on our channel here. We've got a whole series. 
Uh, Gordy says, exactly. I have been fighting your daddy, and you're ignoring my fight for you. I... Farfik Nugan says, do you guys think the New Zealand prime minister stepped down beca uh, was because of Davos? I haven't heard about it yet. We'll check it out. Hmm. Uh, Nobody's alt but mine says, I'm a Crowder fan and a Steel Toe fan. It's ridiculous. You tr you're trying to demonize fans of his. I'm not trying to demonize you. I'm saying you're being had if you think that Crowder is a victim of it. I can't see an offer for $75 million and see him being the victim of big con. There is no big con. I, I think... You have to stop feeling sorry for somebody when you sign something. They, if they signed it, you got to stop feeling sorry for them. Right. And you got paid for it. And not only that, the, biz the shitty business acumen of Steven Crowder. Daily Wire sends you an opening offer. Do you know how many copies of contracts there are before somebody signs something? At least Multiple. four or five offers. At least they mm -hmm. go back and forth four or five times. Uh, the Vikings just started negotiating with Justin Jefferson for an extension. Yep. Uh, Justin Jefferson's agent is upset at the initial offer. And Vikings fans are going, oh no, there's anima. This happens every time. They're going to be mad at each other. They're negotiating. Mm -hmm. The one guy wants as much as he can get. The other side wants to get away with paying as little as they can. That's how these things work. Alex Stein told us too that he's been negotiating with the Blaze yeah. for a while now. Right. It doesn't happen overnight. Crowder is wiping his tears away with $100 bills. <laughs> uh, Crowder will be just fine, sure of it. Yeah, he'll be fine. But, like, he's trying to drag these people down with him that did nothing wrong. They made an offer to a guy. And he's like, they're the enemy. You need to sign up for Mug Club. How are they the enemy? They made you an offer. They offered to put more money in your pocket than you've ever seen before. And you're going to do a 30-minute video talking about how you need to sign up for Mug Club or, or you can't fight these guys. Ah, boy. Uh, here's the, the CEO of the Daily Wire. And by the way, this is how you do business. Not to say that, uh, you know, Ben comes from a certain tribe that knows how to do business. What? But this is how you do business. Do you ever see this guy on Daily Wire stuff? Do you ever see him on Ben Shapiro's show? No. Because I don't. No. He's the fucking CEO. He's not an on-air guy. He doesn't give a shit about on-air things. He sits in an office, which is probably this one. He's, he does the shit he's good at. He does the shit he's good at. He has a book on his desk, so you know he's smart because he's got a book. And look, April, it's got a bookmark in it. Oh, right in the middle. He's so been he, reading. He's reading the book. This is a smart guy. But hey, he's also kind of chill. He hasn't buttoned this jacket. He's got a little bomber coat on. Yeah, this guy, you know, he might ride a bike. He's got a key around his neck. What is that for? Yeah, that's Not for, for any wooden doors, is it? <laughs> Sorry, was that rich? <laughs> it's not where I planned on going with that. This is uh... <laughs> so. This is uh, the Daily Wire uh, making. The... So you know how uh, your boy Crowder uh, he went out and he started you know shit talking this offer, but you know I I might name names. You guys look out to show you how big Daily Wire is and what an amateur they think Steven Crowder is. When he made a video going, I'll name names. Within 24 hours, the Daily Wire went, okay, pissant, we'll name, it was us. Uh, like, this little dude that never goes on camera says, hi, that was, uh, uh, I'm, I'm the name. Yes. That's me. That was me, Mr. Crowder. Here's what you didn't tell your fans. <laughs> and th this is where you guys look. You can say that I'm being unfair to Crowder, whatever. But he, listen to, use your ears and you'll hear me. Because I, I know you're just trying to defend your boy right now. And I, maybe April disagrees with me. He purposely did not tell you the amount of that contract because he knew you wouldn't accept the grift if he did. Fair or unfair? I think that is fair because most of us would appreciate $75 million. And most people would look at him and go, why the fuck are you complaining? And why, if this is the first offer, why are you sitting here burning them publicly? Why aren't you counter offering? Yeah, it's almost like he got the first offer and he's just that insulted. Yeah. Well, then you're dumb. That is dumb. Uh, so we'll watch a little bit of this. It's 52 minutes long. There's no way there, There's no way I can go through this. And, and it just came out overnight, so I didn't have time to timestamp it or anything. To get him over to the Daily Wire, this at the same time that we're investing very heavily in kids' entertainment content and uh, making you know real television content, streaming uh, scripted fiction like 
the Pendragon cycle and Atlas Shrugged and other projects that we've taken on. Sounds Would we have bro. the resources? We weren't sure. But again, you have to have the conversation and we were happy to have it. So we reach out to the agent and we say that. We say, you know, we'd like to have a conversation with Stephen, kind of get into the details of you know, what's he looking for? What's he looking for financially? What's he looking ter- for in terms of structure? Uh, what would make his life better? What would make him happy? You know, he's, he's got this opportunity now to have a next chapter. What's he want that next chapter to be? What a bunch of assholes. This guy sounds reasonable so far. I mean, this big con needs to be stopped. They're sitting there. They see a big talent hit the free agent pool. They ask his agent what he would like, what would make him happy, what would make his life better, how much money he's looking for. I tell you what, guys, these guys who are clearly on YouTube side and not Crowder's, they need to be stopped immediately. Immediately. Uh, And Stephen's agent candidly just wasn't interested in any aspect of that conversation. He only wanted to know about the money. He said, you know, we're not going to have a conversation. We're not going to have some abstract talk. We're going to send us an offer. Tell us how much money you're willing to pay. And he gave us an indication of what the minimum number would have to be in order to even have a discussion with Stephen. That sounds a lot different than what we heard from Stephen Crowder, doesn't it? Yes. Stephen didn't even care to mention the money part. No. He just wanted to know all about the little details that, you know, previously had had at least been making his life a living hell. Oh, yes. And I'm so tired all the time and I don't feel good and I don't. Well, these guys... They were going to make you less tired. They weren't going to have you doing all those change my minds, which have to be exhausting. They just wanted you cranking out shows. Seems like this guy was paying attention. He'd done his homework. And yeah. hey, what can I do to make Steven's life better? How can I'm, I make him happy? I'm just watching this video and comparing <laughs> it to the Crowder video. And again, you Crowder fans can jump down my throat all you want. Just appreciate that. Unlike your other host, this one's honest with you. You know, I had that guy say, I'm done with your show because I wanted you to interview Crowder and then you were mean to him when you watched his video. It's like, I'm not a whole, I'm not Jeremy from the quartering motherfucker. I'm not going to sit here and suck a guy's dick and kiss his ass unless I really like the guy and he think he's doing the right thing. Uh, you know, I'm not just going to kiss his ass and suck his dick because, oh, Mr. Crowder might come on my show and talk to me. I don't give a fuck. I got this far without Steven Crowder. I'm sure we'll keep growing without Steven Crowder. I'd rather be honest. I'd rather tell you what I think. So, so far, uh, Crowder, Mr. I just want to be happy and I'm new Santa. They're all big con. Daily Wire's like, yeah, we asked the guy, what can we do for you? What would make you happy? Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about all that. How much money, you asshole? How weird. And it's a big number. So we talked about it internally, and and we decided, yeah, we should do that. We should send over uh, an an opening offer, a a non-binding term sheet that takes a stab at what we think that that minimum number is going to be to get the conversation started so that we can sit down with Steven so that we can see if uh, if there's a deal that'd be good for him and good for us. And and that's what we did. We we put together the term sheet, we sent it over, uh, and we asked if we could get on the phone and have a conversation with Steven. I'm going to walk you through that document, what it says, what it doesn't say, some of how Steven represented it. I'm sure he feels like he was being accurate, but some of the things they said are simply not true. Uh, Weird. Can you believe that? Can you believe there's a spin and a twist to things? But Crowder wouldn't lie to me. <laughs> Based on the text and, and you know, Stephen's a very passionate guy. I think that he's gay, uh, doing his level best to stand against what he sees as an injustice, but uh, there is no injustice in this document, as I think you'll see. And then I'll tell you what happened right after we sent the document when I finally did get on the phone uh, with Stephen. So first, here's the document. The non binding April, what kind of paper is that printed on? That sounds like cardstock. That sounds like cardstock. The only kind of paper one should be using. Nice, heavy card. You send someone a contract in cardstock, they know you're serious. Mm-hmm. And they know you got cardstock money. None of that flimsy shit. That's right. If Daily Wire sent me a, 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 a contract... And it was on regular printer paper. I'd go, I'm worried about Ben's finances. But if Ben sent me a contract and it was on cardstock, I'd go, I'm getting every dime of this $75 million. These guys got some cash. Now, oh if they God. etched it in a tablet, I'd go, holy fuck, I'm going to get a bonus. You were trusting. Yes. <laughs> Ending confidential term sheet. I'm just going to walk you through it. Full transparency. This non-binding term sheet. Sets forth the basic deal points of a proposed content production and distribution agreement between the Daily Wire LLC, the Texas Limited Liability Company, and Stephen Crowder via his loan out. Uh, So that if and when the parties elect to move forward with a long form agreement, they can move quickly in preparing a definitive and binding agreement. Okay. 
Notice Crowder's was full of black lines and black marks and, you know, you know, uh, redacting things and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Daily Wire's just going, yeah, we're not setting up a mug club hustle here, so we'll just show you what the deal is. Well, they also very clearly state that this is non-binding. Right. This is like an opening. This is an opening, opening offer. to a conversation here. God, that piece of shit. He was going off on his own the entire time, and he needed some kind of big enemy, some kind of big publicity stunt to get it off the ground. I will say this, though. I do think that he wants to be part of a bigger you like, think so? Company. You think I do. I don't think he wants to be by himself. Really? I actually do think that he wants to be part of a company like well, this. Well, I mean, well then if He's you want to see about it. Right, if you want to be part of a company, you can't also get pissed that they want a percentage of your YouTube and they want to punish you if you lose you. They only want Crowder. Do you think Ben Shapiro wants you because he thinks you're such a swell guy and he wants to hang out with you? No. He's Jewish. He wants you to sign this deal and then he never wants to see your fucking face again. I I think if you're He wants but he I'm sorry to finish up here. He wants the YouTube reach. That's what that's what Shapiro wants. Mm -hmm. So if you get banned from that, yes, he's going to take money away from you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go I ahead. I think when you're as big as Steven is, I think going off on your own actually might be terrifying. You're gonna want somebody else to help you handle all this shit. I mean, then hire internally, but like don't bitch when other people go, Oh, you wanna play for our team? Well, here's our terms. It's like when the Yankees hire someone, it's, if they have a big beard, they go, well, we're the Yankees. You don't have a big fucking beard here. You shave that beard. To me, it kind of feels a little bit like wanting to have your cake and eat it too. Yes. Like you want all this control of everything, but then you want to be part of the larger company. Oh, by the way, we're not doing Crowder for overtime anymore. We're just kind of into it because it got the people talking. So then that got me talking and might as well just go through the thing. Oh, and then uh, I, I picked out a few good stories for April today. Tits at the gym. I've okay. got tits complaining at the gym. <laughs> and I've got some thoughts. Uh, I certainly will too then. T-H-O-T-S and T-H-O-U-G-H-T-S. Fun. That's just legalese. That means uh, this is just a conversation starter. Right. And we're obviously going to have a negotiation uh, if we move forward. And a lot of these points are going to get beat. Uh, obviously. So in their mind, they're going, this is just an initial offer sheet. Obviously, we're going to negotiate. Nobody's going to blow up and act like a retard over this. Fingers crossed. Well, guess what? They underestimated one Steven Crowder because he indeed will act retarded over an offer sheet. How insulting did it have to feel to be them seeing him go over this the way right. he did? And then also to watch them watch the video and go, Steven, nobody is fooled about who you're talking about. Like everybody talking about this went, they're talking about Daily Wire. Yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who've never been through a contract negotiation, then, well, that's how it works. When you when you send someone an offer, you don't send them uh, everything that you're willing to say yes to because <laughs> there is going to be a negotiation because agents and lawyers are going to get involved because you can't read their mind. And you don't know everything that will be important to them and everything that they'll want. You don't know even... You understand this motherfucker's having to explain basic contract shit that most of us know from watching movies because Crowder's such a dumb fuck. Dude, I've been through this before. I've worked for a union before yeah. where we have to negotiate our contract every so often. And it is true. Like one side will send you like, oh, this is what we would like to propose to you. Yeah. And then our stewards go through it and like either write notes in there and strike shit and yeah. add shit. And you go back and forth for a while until you figure it out. You basically it. insult each other in tiny parts. Yeah. Until you go, all right, that sucks, but it sucks equally for both of us. Exactly. I agree. I can agree to yeah. this. And, you know, some of their sort of non-negotiable uh, points. And so you send over a, a loose offer and then they're going to beat it up a little bit. And they're going to say, well, this should be higher and this should be lower. And you're going to come back and say, no, uh, they're going to make a YouTube video calling you the enemy and a big con and a piece of shit and in the back pocket of YouTube. And it's not being in the back pocket of YouTube if you want to have a presence on the largest video sharing and streaming site in the world. If you go to Target and wear a shirt, that's not you being in the pocket of Big Target. You want to shop at Target. You want to be a Target customer. God, everyone's got this. That's not what I think when I go there. Everyone's got this 12-year-old punk rock idea of, I'm not selling out, man. Do you wear a shirt at a store, you stupid asshole? Then you want to do business with a big play. You want access to a big playground, so you follow the rules of the playground. If that's selling out, then we were all sold out in kindergarten and we haven't stopped since. I only wear non-Target shirts at Target right. to show them. I wear Costco shit at Target. Fuck them. Ew. Fuck big Target. You no, wear Costco gonna... shirts? No, I can't wear Costco shirts. The fuck? Fabric makes me itchy. Stand firm here, but we're willing to compromise there. And over time, you either get to a deal 
or you don't get to a deal. But that, that's how a good faith negotiation always works. 100% of every uh, interaction I've ever had with any talent, that's the process. I love how this guy's passively going, this guy's a crazy asshole. Exceptionally bad. Except he is the worst guy I've ever spoken to. Literally every talent I've ever spoken with does business this way. Yeah, Stephen, while maybe not a bad guy, is definitely bad at business. He's a drama if queen who needs to cut back on the Adderall. Sure. That might be the case. Maybe. The hillbilly, no, hillbilly heroin is oxy. I don't know what you'd call Adderall. I College cocaine. There you go. Uh, and so here we go. I want to know what here that was our key offer. is to. A four-year initial term with two-year renewal at DW's sole discretion. That just means Stephen's going to work for DW for four years. Uh, and if it's going really well, DW can retain him for an additional two years. Two, uh, the fee. And remember, this is the, the minimum number uh, that we thought would get the conversation started with Stephen. $50 million for the initial term, oh. plus $25 million for the renewal term, if extended, paid in monthly installments. Oh my God, dude. 50, First off, that's a ton of money. It's $12 million. That's a ton. $12.5 million a year. That's a ton of money for an initial offer. Right, and that's just that's what an he initial said. initial offer. He goes, this is the minimum amount we thought would get the conversation started. If Dickbag would have shut the fuck up he shouldn't even have read this deal, by the way. It should have been his agent. Because the agent won't go and make a dumb YouTube video blowing up the whole thing. No, it sounded like the agent was going to get the money thing covered for him anyways. They That's where he started. They could have got that deal up to $70 million. Guaranteed, yeah. They could have got that to $70 if, million. if they want him that bad. And remember Crowder was waving around that paper going, they said if I got demonetized or anything that it would cost me two hundred fifty grand. That little piece of shit didn't say, oh, by the way, that 250 grand is out of $50 million. So you, it's something you might not notice. You could get demonetized quarterly and you'd lose a million a year out of your 12 and a half million. You could not meet your, because remember there was a $1 million penalty if he didn't do 192 shows a year. Yep. You could do 175 shows a year and still make $11.5 million. Those punishments from the Daily Wire were incredibly fair. I think by the grace of God, you'll be okay. Remember, if he got banned on Spotify, it was like a 10% dock and pay. Oh, you still make $11 million, do you? What? You can get banned from an entire platform. They'll still give you millions of dollars every year. Yeah, what was all the I'm tired comments and stuff like that about? I feel like the amount of shows they're asking of him, I feel like we, you know, like obviously for a much smaller crowd and stuff but Again, we do that and then some i'm going to say i don't believe a word he said i don't think he meant a single word of it this man is he has the mentality of a ted bundy when it comes to talking people he, talking to people he says what he needs to say to get people to do the things he needs them to do he may in fact be a sociopath because this guy creates an enemy he he doesn't even lie he tells lies of omission and then he tells people, here's what you can do for me to help me, but it's us. You're in it with me. And what is he going to pour you a cup of coffee in that mug? You've been had. You've been took. I kind of feel like the more I learn about him and the, the way he portrays things and stuff, I feel like he's just like super ultra insecure and stuff. And he needs everyone to be right there with him or something's going wrong. Just a little you bit. Know? Just a little bit. It's like I say, a pretty big number, uh, but we thought for a talent like Steven, this is probably the, the minimum number that's going get, to get us in the door so that we can sit down and talk to him. Three, production costs. Uh, this is important. We, we've never made a deal quite like the offer that we put in front of Steven because Steven, very independent guy. I mean, uh, all of our talent have very independent voices. Obviously, we can't tell him what to say. You know, Candace says what she wants and Jordan Peterson says what he wants, Ben, Michael. Uh, but Steven has always built in this protection for himself that, that he wants to actually produce his content. He doesn't want, you know, most of, most of our guys, they come to the studio and we turn on the cameras. We point the right. cameras, we point the lights. Steven likes to do that with his own team uh, to just make doubly sure that no one's interfering with his content, not that we would. And so we anticipated that and we said, Crowder will bear the burden of production, including all costs associated therewith, on all the content contemplated herein, 
except on the quarterly and annual content contemplated below. We'll, we'll get to that part uh, a little bit later. It's kind of a novel concept. Uh, the quality of the production will be as good as or better than is currently existing content. So that basically means you're going to make the same show you've been making. Mm -hmm. And you're, it's going to cost you the same amount it's been costing you. Sure. I wonder if that part didn't get him because that might cost him like $2 million a year. And I'm sure it wouldn't. It wouldn't cost him $2 million a year. To produce to, a show? To have four guys. I mean, those four guys combined will probably make two hundred fifty grand a year. Combined. So okay. your production costs are going to be maybe, I mean, a go million? absolutely balls out 500 grand a year. I'm saying it would cost him to produce his own show. You've got four of them, at least yeah. a million. Okay, well, let's say a million. $11.5 million a year for you. Uh, let's say you get banned off of YouTube. Uh, now you're down to $8 million a year. I'm, I'm sure he <sighs> sees that, though, as like, oh, look, you're taking more money away from me. Like, you're starting me here, but you keep chipping away at it. Where does it stop? When you either say no or say yes, but you go and make a YouTube video. Now you've just made sure nobody who's going to send this guy an offer if he's going to go on YouTube and wave it around for everybody. I've wondered that many times about celebrities of any kind. Like when you throw a fit publicly, nobody's going to want to deal right. with your level of bullshit. This just again, Steven's going to produce his own content. It has to be as good as the stuff uh, that Steven's audience has come to expect from him. Um, and that'll come out of the 50 million. So it's not like it's not like all of that 50 million goes right in Stephen's pocket. He's going to use some of it to pay for you know, producers and and studio space and camera uh, equipment and operators and lights. Uh, just like we're going to use some of you know the money that we make to pay for the infrastructure and the technology and the uh, marketing and the legal and all the other parts that go into making a successful business. Revenue collection that says we'll have the exclusive right to realize revenue in connection with all yeah. of his content and brand. We're giving you $50 million. Any money you make, we're taking. We need to make back our $50 million. That mm -hmm. sounds totally fair to me. We're paying you this guaranteed significant amount of money, $50 million. Uh, and for that, one of the things we're buying is the content, but we're also buying the right to monetize the content so that we can have a chance of making some money and not just spending money. Right. What is the content? First, we broke this into daily, monthly, quarterly, and annual content. The daily content is going to be very obvious to you. He'll deliver a one and a half hour louder with Crowder audio video show a of a quality oh and kind consistent with the shows that he's currently producing four days a week. That's 192 original episodes a year if you factor in four weeks uh, of vacation. You guys, the, the guys, you, those of you who like Crowder, you were right and I was wrong. They're going to make him work an hour and a half a day. <laughs> and he's gonna have to do it four days a week he, he's gonna only gonna have three day weekends <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make him work you guys I'm sorry what are you doing fuck Big Con and fuck Ben Shapiro <laughs> they're gonna make Crow April you don't understand no I guess not they're gonna make Crowder work for I 90 minutes are you going to be okay? No, because Big Con is fucking Crowder, and if you don't buy a muck, you're a piece of shit. I guess I'm about a piece of shit. Four days a week, an hour and a half. Steven Crowder, fuck you. Dude, <laughs> no matter how tired I was from anything, I would never complain about an hour and a half. An like, hour and a half. When we do a four and a half hour show, an hour and a half would just fly by if you're doing a conservative talk show like crowder does if i go on the blaze once a day i've got an hour and a half show prepped they're oh. done vacation uh, including all ad reads and promotions as requested by us so he's going to continue to produce his show his his louder with crowder show four days a week 192 times a year uh, and that'll include us being able to put ads in it and promotions in it They'll be filmed in studio daily, Monday through Thursday. At least one hour of them will be outside the paywall. That's much how Stephen already operates. That's the part that goes out on podcasting. It's the part that goes out on YouTube. It's the part that goes out on Rumble. And at least 30 minutes inside the, D the DW Plus paywall. Fair so enough. In the same way that right now he has his piss off YouTube segment uh, that has historically been at uh, Blaze. Well, he would still do that same kind of concept. 30 minutes. Ben Shapiro does the same thing. He does like a half hour of his show, and then he goes, if you want more, sign up for dailywire.com.
So he's keeping shit simple for him. He's keeping yeah. it basically the same format. Yeah, I mean, you couple this with what Crowder told us about the punishment, because he only showed you the punishments and this and that and the other thing. This sounds like an incredibly good start to a negotiation. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for anyone to be pissed at each other over this. I do think you're right. Maybe Crowder should not have read the first one, and it should have been the agent. This wasn't even an official contract offer. There's nothing Crowder could have signed nothing here. Nothing binding, yeah. They just said it's an offer sheet. Mm-hmm. And as if the show would now be behind our paywall. Uh, Crowder can bank or pre-record a limited number of episodes upon our approval and reasonable discretion. Um, days without new original episodes will be scheduled in advance subject to our reasonable approval. What's this about? Well, a guy like Crowder, you know, in addition to his four weeks uh, of vacation, there's just also going to be times where he, for whatever reason, maybe he's got a speech, maybe he's got a stand-up comedy gig somewhere around the country. You know, something that three-day weekend can't accommodate. That is weird. I feel like I can shove most things into a three-day weekend, you know. If he were to come to us and say, hey, I can't really shoot a show on Thursday because I'm going to be doing this stand-up gig, that's fine. Let's shoot two episodes on Tuesday and we'll roll one of them out on Thursday. It's just giving us all the... First of all, if you're paying me $50 million over four years, stand-up can go fuck itself right in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much stand-up really makes you in that realm, I guess. Like, maybe... You when you're bigger like he is, maybe yeah. it does. That's very nice of Daily Wire to provide him that accommodation. They're sitting there going, if you, need, if you have a stand-up gig, we'll let you do a pre-recorded show. If I'm the Daily Wire and I'm paying you $50 million, I'm like, no, you're doing a show for me. You're not doing that stand-up oh, gig. Oh, you haven't considered taking tomorrow's show off because you have stand-up on Saturday? No, no, I don't feel it's necessary. What? Fuck this guy. The maximum flexibility to still make the episodes but for Stephen to be able to live the other important parts of his life. 192 episodes. Uh, obviously, there are 260 work days in a year. Most Americans work 260 days a year minus 10. That's two weeks of vacation. So they work about 250 work days a year. And we're telling Stephen, you've got to produce 192. So this is the CEO being very passive aggressive going, Stephen's kind of being a whiny cunt, isn't he, boys and girls? A little bit. Do you know how confident this guy is in the ground they're standing on publicly? He doesn't even need to bash the guy. He's just laying out what's... He's reading the deal to you. Crowder had to go on this big diatribe about how tired he is and how a big conservative is in bed with YouTube. They're not in bed with YouTube. They like the reach that YouTube provides them, so they play the game. That's not them. They're not sitting there meeting with YouTube going, mm, <laughs> Crowder doesn't know we're here, so don't tell him. Well, this this guy's just going, hey, if I read the deal, people will see what an asshole this guy is. Well, and this little guy also knows that. Little guy. Well, I just, whatever. That key he, unlocks the locker that holds his stilts. Oh, uh, no, he knows that it's not a good business move to go out and trash people either. Right. That That's never going to help you. Already, even to say four weeks of vacation, um, you know, that that is probably above average, but it doesn't really capture the reality of this, which is there are going to be you know, 60 days basically of the year where uh, Fridays, we call them, where Stephen basically <laughs> doesn't have to produce uh, a show. Fridays, we call them. And you Fridays. may say, well, that's still a lot. And I know Stephen says that's more than even, you know, network TV would uh, would ask for. Well, you're not no, these are points that can be negotiated. I still think most people feel like, you know, if you're only working four days a week uh, and you get four weeks off every year and you can pre-schedule even additional time to be traveling by banking. I'm actually getting a boner listening to the terms of this deal. No, I am too, because I'm thinking back to days where I actually had vacation yeah. offered to me. And I start, like most people start at two weeks. Yeah. Or you have to earn the hours like weekly to take off right. like a whole day or something. Episodes, you would at least say, you may think well, he needed to negotiate that and get it down to 170 or something. Sure, I thought he would, but it's certainly not unfair to expect someone that is making $50 million over the next four years to, you know, work 192 days a year. I kind of like how passive aggressive I do is. too. I like this guy. <laughs> I funny. like the way he's just calmly taking Steven Crowder apart. He's like, well, you know, I mean, Steven could have negotiated these points with us. That would have been fine. But, you know, I mean, 192 days a year. I don't really see why that would be and listen, such a problem for someone. He was. It sounds like he would have been willing to get down to 170-ish Shows a year too. I'm telling you, Crowder could have got 60 million and 150 days a year. He could have gotten that. Daily Wire clearly, he's the biggest free agent, or was the biggest free agent in conservative media. They wanted the guy. 
Now he's tainted. Now he's just hissy fitted, hissy <laughs> fitted himself into independence. That brings us to monthly content. Uh, what is monthly content? Well, you know, at Daily Wire, our members uh, are entitled to an all access uh, once a month with most of our talent. Uh, and that's where our members get to interact with them, sort of one on one, ask them questions. So we're saying once a month, he would have to do a 90 minute all access okay. and any promotions and ad reads that would go in that. Right now, there are no ad reads in all access. But again, you're giving yourself, it's a four, possibly six year deal. We talk to you assholes completely free of. What the fuck? <laughs> For an hour and a half, though, like all a of your, month, one time a month, all of your shows are only an hour and a half long. That to me yeah. does not seem like you're asking a lot. I might have to do a show on a Friday once a month. <laughs> like I will say when Fucking pussy. when I first came around to this whole thing back in 2020, I was starting to think like, oh, you know, those evening shows I started with could be like two, two and a half hours long. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get through that. And then you start working your way up and like yeah. an hour and a half seems like nothing. I know now. that doesn't seem like, it seems like you're getting warmed up. Like when we do our members only shows on Sunday nights, they're only an hour long and it just kind of flies by. So no matter how, what we've done that day, no matter how tired you are, you can do that. If you're quickly. any good at broadcasting, you can do an hour without prep. You should be able yeah. to. You're giving yourself a little attitude for things to change. Quarterly content, uh, we asked that Stephen would produce one major promo video and photo shoot uh, coordinated by us for Quarterly. his content at the company. You know, we would want him to. All right. I, you know, look, I'm getting to the point now where I feel like we've heard enough of this deal. It that is. We can kind of. I, I like it's him. I kind of want to. I'm going to watch the rest of this myself later. Sure. Because I like this guy. I like the CEO that uh, the Benny boys got. Mm hmm. But, uh, oh, there's uh, got to thank a few people here. Thank you, Elias. He says, this is just like the Napster episode of South Park or Master P's son doesn't get the island he wants. And Hulkamash says, at 192 1.5 hour shows, Crowder is making $43,402 an hour. Fuck Crowder. 